Um, Good evening. And thank you for joining us for the Vortex's virtual programming. Yay, thank you so much. I'm Jeremy Rashad Brown, board president of the Vortex and director of tonight's virtual reading of both field berries in the upper room. Uh, Melissa Voigt, who uh, vote. I always mess up her name and I love her to death. Melissa Vogt, managing director of the Vortex is our technical director for this evening's live stream. In the upper room introduces uh, the Berries, a family of multi-generational background living under one roof in the 1970s. This, this centers around a family uh, that is has this matriarch called Rose and she is um, controlling to say the least. And she's indoctrinated fear into every member of the house. Um, her past is very sketchy um, and she also holds some dark secrets. Uh, so this play is uh, woven with storytelling, Black love, the occult, family secrets, sisterhood, and the ties that bind us all. And I will be reading stage directions and actions. And tonight's performance will run approximately an hour and a half. And so during these uncertain times, it's imperative that we check in and support one another. And we hope that this uh, brings you some type of uh, interaction that um, is productive in your life and gives you a little bit of uh, brevity to the situation. And so if you feel moved to do so, please help support more productions like this uh, by donating to the Vortex at www.vortexrep.org. And please feel free to follow us on social media at Facebook, Vortex Rep, and on Instagram, Vortex underscore rep, and on Twitter, which is Vortex on Mainer. And so without further ado, I introduced you both field berries in the upper room. And boop boop ba do, let's get this show rocking and rolling. In the Upper Room by Bo Berry, an eight person cast of African American actors. Rose, dark skinned, 50s, a Mahalia Jackson type, raised old school in a modern world. Eddie, any shade, 50s, a quiet, hard working, mild mannered family man. Janet, light skinned, 30s, a strong voice. Matter of fact, stoic. John, any shade, 30s, a boisterous storyteller with a charismatic way. Josephine, dark skinned, teen, a book smart girl under the shadow of her grandmother. Yvette, light skinned, teen, a fun loving girl under the doting wing of her grandmother. Jackie and Dolores, any shade. 50s, two gossiping aunts. In synopsis, this is a play with family secrets, gossip, colorism, voodoo, and the magic of storytelling of us growing up. Act one, scene one, a family in a living room. There is music from one of their generations playing on the record player, the women, Janet, Jackie, and Dolores play Pocono at the table. Eddie, the patriarch, sits on the sofa being entertained by John, who is in the middle of one of his tall tales. It is dated. You know someone that had that sofa or lamp or hairstyle. So I reached up real high and I touched the biggest, lowest branch I could grab. And mm -hmm. Lord knows I was only five foot back then, man. And you about five one now. <laughs> Hey, woman, please, all right? I broke that big old branch off. Mm. Came off like nothing. I'm looking at this motherfucker, and he's looking at me, right? I poke mm. the stick out at him, blah, and he jumps back, all spooked, eyes all big. And hell, I was scared right along with him, but shit, what the hell was I going to do? Only only one of us was going to come out of those woods, I'm telling you right now. Lord. So I look up, I look at him in the eye, and I go, surprise, motherfucker. <laughs> and then I just oh, jump him first. And that's how we was eating bear stew for a week. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Hey, for real though, that's why I got this nice ass fur coat y'all always exclaiming about. See, that's that's bear fur. Y'all know I have to sharpen that, man. Lord. John, 
You ain't killed no bear. <laughs> Okay, now, Dolores, whatever you say, <laughs> you done killed off three husbands by now. Ooh! So they wanted to go, right? <laughs> you and your tall tail. Mm -hmm. Hey, hey, this old witch don't know nothing, right? Baby, don't let them witches take nothing off you. John, that's enough now. All right, all right, all right. You remember when I killed that bear, though, old man? You remember that? I remember you coming home with that damn fur and that damn story. <laughs> Man, come on. So it was lined up so good, I didn't know you was a tailor. So, so where I get all that meat from then? Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> but I know I didn't need any of it. <laughs> you did too, old man. Oh, no, no, no. You ain't coming up here with a bag of mystery meat and a fur coat trying to feed my black ass. I did not partake. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> Ooh, he know. <laughs> no, this heifer did. Yes, she did. <laughs> Pay up, y'all. I'm trying to go on a cruise. What mm. cruise you trying to go on? One without your ass. You don't need to know every move I make, Dolores, but you got to pay me that money. <laughs> Janet, I know you ain't over there gambling with my money. Oh, John, now let that girl play without all that extra. She gonna earn it back and then some. Um, Jackie, I ain't worried about John. He ain't gonna <laughs> let me do anything. Okay. Now that's true. That woman owns me, that's true. Mm-hmm. Y'all wanna play? No. I was barely asking you anyway. <laughs> Eddie, you wanna chip in? No, I, I better not. <laughs> you scared, Pop, losing money to women? I'm, I'm more scared of the women. <laughs> Hey, get on over there, old man. Show him how a man plays. Well, I, I'm, I'm cashing out and I'm taking my behind on. Come on, Eddie, you can sit right here. How y'all even play this nonsense? <laughs> it is nonsense, isn't it? Look, poke ain't no, ain't no real game. <laughs> Come on now. We'll see if it's real when we take all your money and then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, now. <laughs> Hey, hey y'all need to get up and dance, though, man. I'm tired of being the only one on my feet. You're not getting enough attention, John. Oh. They in the middle of a game. Ah, those pennies can wait. Oh, mm -hmm. now, John, come on with all that. Hey. The table dances as they play. John's eyes are closed with a wide grin. Bikino! <laughs> uh, I know you didn't just roll up in here and win Bikino. See, that's why I cashed out. Oh, yes, I did. Mm. And I ain't got no problem taking no woman's money either. Uh, Rose enters Mary. and scans the room. She is severe. Barry. J Barry. Mm. John, cut that shit off. Ooh. Oh, we, did we wake you up, Mama? Uh... I know y'all ain't over here gambling with no women, Barry. I know I didn't see that. No, 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 no. Calm down, Rose. We just playing Pacino. Yeah. Is she your partner? No. Oh, you sitting across from her like she your partner. Mama Rose. I, I ain't talking to you, girl. Ain't no need to talk to my niece like that, Rose. We was mm -hmm. down here having a good time now. Right. You want to join us? Mm -hmm. It ain't got to be nothing. It ain't got to be nothing don't mean it ain't nothing. Y'all down here gambling and carrying on. I mean, I didn't get no invite to the party. Mama, now this is my house. Mm -hmm. uh, with what money, uh, Negro? Mm. Didn't me and your daddy make the down payment? Ooh. Still, still my house though. Mm -hmm. So what you trying to say, John? I'm just, just let's, re I'll, can we relax, dance? Have some wine, maybe? I, I ain't drinking Mama, no wine. Mama. It's Sunday tomorrow, and I better see your black ass at church, yeah. Barry. Get your ass up from the table and go to bed. And I really don't know what y'all looking at each uh, other like that for. Like y'all's uh, eyes about to fall out of y'all's heads. Y'all better get right with the Lord while oh, you want to be gambling and drinking all throughout Saturday night, especially yeah. you. Why are you trying to raise my grandbabies, little Miss Light Skin? <laughs> she exits. Oh. Eddie exits. The room is still. John moves to the table. 
Well, uh, I, I might as well try to get this money back then, I guess. Lord, help me. How she got a woman, and I'm sitting over here with Jackie's ass. Ah. Scene two. Dolores and Jackie sit in discussion the, the next day. Sisters who have seen each other and their family go through it all. They never have anything better to do. Lord, girl, the way she came down them stairs. Carol, like a damn train. Baby, you better have your black ass in church. And you too, little miss. What's she called then? Little Miss Light Skin. Ooh, 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 ooh. Little Miss Light Skin. What the hell's that supposed to mean? Girl, I don't know what's wrong with that woman. Mm, that bulldog. Mm-hmm. I do mm. know. I ain't trying to piss her off, though. Oh, hell no. She crazy. All that evil. You know, she brought that shit straight up here from the South. That wickedness. Is it the South? She done I told found... too many stories. She from mm -hmm. Philadelphia, Georgia, yep. South Carolina. Yeah, but farm in Louisiana. I'm like, damn, this bitch really is Rand McNally. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't never met a family. I don't trust nobody with no family because you came from somebody. You just ain't hiding them. You ain't running neither or you're ashamed. She probably got some voodoo on them. Stop it. She no. ain't no voodoo. Nah, you ever seen her look into a mirror? Uh-uh, girl. Mm -hmm. I don't be paying attention to her all like that. Well, I bet you she ain't got no reflection. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know she is a some type of something. Her age do keep changing, though. How you gonna be five years younger than your own child? Uh-huh, and the way she is with Jan, no. And for what? Because, mm -hmm. I mean, Jan pretty. Mm -hmm. What causes that to hate somebody? Jan got them hazel eyes. Hell, Eddie ain't even allowed to talk to her. Bet she wishes she could cook up a spell and take her looks right off her damn face. Talk to her? Eddie gonna catch a case just to look at her. Uh-huh, yeah. Looking might be worse. Them kids been married 15 years, and you still worried about your man. Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody trying to get his ass. Mm. I mean, Eddie is a good looking man. <laughs> I have thought about it once or twice. Ooh, me too. That woman would kill you, though. Well, it might be worth it, shoot. Oh, I don't know. Don't fool around and get a spell put on you, because I can't help you out. You show up at my house floating, I'm going to have to put you down, sis. <laughs> well, why would I be floating? Uh, whatever they be doing with those voodoos these days, floating, rolling, I don't know. Girl, if she could voodoo this damn mortgage, I don't okay. know what else she does. <laughs> I know that's right. <laughs> oh my goodness. You know, Eddie, he's so different when she's around. I know, like he can't even talk. The devil be walking in the rooms with her. Damn, is it really all that? I don't know. What else? Well, you want some of this cobbler? Don't play, you know I do. <laughs> Scene three. Rose is in front of the mirror. There is a reflection. She rubs lotion in her face. She is beautiful and vain. Her skin glistens, it's perfect. Eddie walks in. He's dressed in military garb, Air Force. Mm -hmm. Hey there, Barry. Hey, Rosie. What are you doing home? I gotta talk to you about something. Uh, they might be moving us again. Huh? Well, uh, yeah, they're looking to get me back to St. Louis or uh, back down to Georgia. Did you tell them no? Well, the service don't work like that, Rosie. Uh, then, then, wh what do I need to do? Who do I need to talk to? Well, there ain't nobody to talk to. We we just gotta wait and see when I get my orders. I am not going back south, Barry. That just ain't happening. Well, it just may be. Did you talk to them about staying here? I mean, he's, I mean, did you even try? I mean, we're too damn old to be packing up and moving all over this country again. I mean, and for what? I mean, nothing. I, I told Jones I'd prefer to stay put. 
He said he'll see what he can do. Oh, Jones only knows two languages. And one of them is alcohol. I mean, why can't we just go back to Puerto Rico? Because it's not up to me, Rose. That man is going to change his mind. I refuse to go back to the damn South and be treated like somebody's nigger berry. If we ain't staying up North, then we got to go back to the island. I don't know if that's an option. Half those ignorant ass white folks are poorer than dirt, looking at me like I'm below them. Ooh, we had a maid, Barry. Chefs, fine clothes. Look, I want that back. Can you get me that back? Rose goes to her dresser and lights a cigarette. Eddie lights one too. <sighs> Look. I wish we never had to leave here. You and me both. John could have met a nice mm, Puerto Rican girl. Mm. Get himself hitched up and... Mm. Can you imagine those babies tan with big old green eyes and long wavy hair? Name them Maria or something like that. You got two beautiful granddaughters right here. Mm-hmm. Well, they all right. They ain't no girl from Impanita. <laughs> 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 uh, you know, I mean, Yvette is pretty. I mean, she, she, she'll be something big. And Josephine. Hmm? Um... Josephine is beautiful. Josephine got attitude, like she better than everybody else. She's just different. She's just like you was. Well, uh, we already got me. She's smart. That girl be studying. Ain't no man want no woman smarter than he is. So I don't even know what she's thinking. Nah. Uh, you always favorite event. I raised that girl. And if we end up moving, I want to take her with us. No, 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 no. That is not going to fly this time. John and Janet can't ca take care of everybody without us, so we'll take you that too. Then we can just take care of, they can just take care of the other girl. She's a teenager now. Rose, she ain't going to just up and leave school. Uh, she going to do whatever I tell her to do. And what about her parents? Uh, and what about them? Well, they're gonna have something to say on the matter. They ain't had nothing to say the last time we took that little, her little old yellow butt. Well, she was a baby. And now it's no different. Look, now she can actually help out, and she can help me work around the house. Now I'm gonna need some help too if we're gonna be out there, you know, all by ourselves. Well, look, let me just see what Jones got to say on the matter before we do anything. Oh, well, you got time. I ain't packing up. All right. Uh, you didn't say a damn thing. About what? Rose models for him. Look, this is a new dress, Barry. Oh. And thank you for it. Oh, yes. Yes. That looks real good on you. Oh, you like it? I do. You see, I, I kept my figure, you know. <laughs> I do know. I'll eat after 8 p.m. I do calisthenics. Yeah, I see you out there in the morning, mm. stretching and all that. So uh, if Joan needs some uh, extra persuading, <laughs> I think this dress is the other language he speaks. You think so, huh? <laughs> Most men do, Barry. Rose goes to the record player. She plays something slow. She plays and dances at him. She smokes her cigarette. <laughs> Why are you so evil, Rose? Oh, you fell in love with this evil girl, didn't you? Did I fall in love? Or did you put a spell on me? Ah, uh, these hips did. <laughs> <laughs> something. Mmm, these mm, lips did. Yeah, something did. 
made you leave that white woman real quick. Oh, come on, stop it. Your little fast ass white girl. You know Sabrina wasn't white. Don't be saying her name in my bedroom. Well, she was Creole. She wasn't shit. That was a real long time ago. Not so long you don't remember. Rose keeps dancing closer and closer to Eddie until she's in his face. She blows smoke at him. He savors it. Tell me you love me, Barry. I love you, Rose. Mm. Scene four, Yvette and Josephine are in their bedroom listening to records. Yvette is trying to get a dance move down. Josephine reads, she eyes her sister. Tell me that's not the moves. Girl, they got the white girls doing the choreography. Yeah, it looks like it. That's why I have to get in, so next year I can add some rhythm. Something. Some of this, uh, uh, some of that, uh, uh. Yes. <laughs> what you doing? Studying. Reading our depressing history in America. Whose history? Apparently just white men. Oh, so we just slaves? No, or we don't exist. Take your pick. That's why I flunked history, because it was bad for my mental mojo. Then apparently so was math and social studies and home ec. I forget you. Did you leave early today? No. That's clearly a lie. I'm a junior. I can skip study hall, so I did. What'd you go do? Nothing. Just came home. Uh, no, you didn't. Grandmother would have seen your ass and you would have caught hell. Well, that's true. So what you do? It doesn't matter. Are you hiding something from me? No, I'm just practicing my personal right to privacy. Besides, you just be jealous and start acting out and I just don't have time for all that. A boy? No. You can't lie to me, who is it? You bet, let it go. I'm not saying a word. <laughs> okay, then I have to be a tattleteller and go to let the family know that you left early. Are you for real? Joe, I don't want to do this. You're forcing my hand because I cannot let you have a secret love affair and not know the details. Oh my God, all right. But you need to sit down and shut the hell up for life. Okay, you are sworn to secrecy. <laughs> it's no secret love affair. Is it Marlon? Are you back with him? Oh no, I am not. He was in love with your ass. I can't be doing the love letters and all that. He wrote me one, you're damn mm -hmm. every day. You're right, I'm so glad it's not him. It's Mike Jacobs. Mike Jacobs? Who the hell is that? Oh, you don't know him? Uh, it doesn't matter, I, I told you who it is. Mike Jacobs? Oh, well. Oh, don't hurt yourself with that. Yeah, well, lucky for me, it's a picture book. Jacobs, Jacobs. Do we know his family? Nope. Jacobs, Jacobs, Josephine, a white boy? Are you out of your skull? You can't bring a white boy home? And that is why we meet after school. You can't say anything. I won't. I mean, I don't want any of this. What the hell is daddy gonna say? Daddy can be very open-minded. Not when it comes to the oppressor and his baby girl. Please, Mike is hardly the oppressor. He's in photography club. Besides, he's conscious. Well, not after daddy gets a hold of him. Which he won't. This is crazy. I just, I never thought. What made you want to go with a white guy? I don't know. We just dig each other. Mm. Early graves? Okay. You never even said anything about a white guy. I thought- I have Tom I Jones all over my wall. He's not white. Do you have a problem with it? I mean, you would never date one? I mean, never say never, but I appreciate a brother because they appreciate me. A white dude, I just don't know where they stand. They're so passive aggressive, they're weak, I don't know. You would like Mike, he's thoughtful and open. Mm-hmm, 
he's unlike anyone I've known. Black, white, he's just a good person. Mm-hmm. Okay, we're done here. It's just like a black guy will do anything for you. Uh, no. A black guy will do anything for you. They love you. They look at me like I'm their auntie. I'm gonna support whatever you wanna do. I just want you to be careful. I am careful. This isn't the 50s. There are lots of couples like us out there. Yeah, out there, like New York. Not out there, like outside. It's worth it. Whatever happened to Marlon? I liked him. You used to come home gushing about him all the time, your dark, fine, chocolate brother. <laughs> he was 14. Well, I was 12, so you know. Didn't you love him? I was also 14. I just remember you praying at night because I would hear you. Stop right there. And you were like, dear God. Stop. Please, if you really exist. Stop it. Please. Please let Marlon kiss me. Let him love me because I love him. <laughs> Stop it. Just saying. Yes, I love Marlon, but sometimes it just doesn't work out. Oh, he was crazy about you too. Can we drop this? Yeah, but one day you're gonna have to talk about it. Rose has appeared in the doorway. Uh, talk about what? Hi, grandmother. Uh, hi, baby. Uh, Rose breezes by and kisses Yvette on the face. She waves her fingers to Josephine. You can't say hi, girl. Hi, grandmother. What y'all up here carrying on about? Nothing, just talking about Marlon. Who the hell is Marlon? Yvette, stop it. <laughs> Josephine, little boyfriend from freshman year. You remember him, you know his mama. Oh, that boy, yes, what about him? Josephine, I know you ain't thinking about going back with him. No, I'm not. Cause we didn't already talk about this. What happens? I thought he was nice. Nice ain't everything and it's none of your business, old nosy butt. You up here working out on your dancing? I was. Well, just keep on doing that. Oh, you just so pretty. Thank you. Ah, that's right. You say thank you. You know, I was at the store this morning and I ran into that old gossip Geraldine. Miss Mosby? Mm-hmm. Now to you, she's Miss Mosby. To me, she's Geraldine. Anyway, what she was asking me about, she was saying, um, What's that pretty little granddaughter of yours gonna be doing after school, after high school? And then you know what? She said you need to move to New York and be a model or something. Ah, uh, that's, that's not me. Can't model with a fat neck like that. So damn right you ain't going to New York. Then she said, you should pair up with her old bow leg son, Charles. <laughs> Ugh, Charles Mosby? <laughs> Joe, and you remember him? Uh, uh, uh. And that's when I said, uh-uh, she gonna be busy in New York. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Josephine, she didn't ask about you. That's all right. I don't know her anyway. Mm. You been outside running around? No, I've been up here studying. Ooh, girl. You need to brush up on them damn edges. You need to brush them damn edges down. Looking like buckwheat up in here. Oh, you gonna need another relaxer for you. I'm gonna get have to get you one. Josephine, look, I'm gonna bring home some cream I got. I want you to use it every day. Now it's better than the last one I brought you. Okay. Excuse me? Yes, grandmother. Okay, now you put it all over your face and your neck and your hands. It's expensive. Yes, ma'am. Girl, you need to look at me when I'm talking to you. Now, you don't need to have all that attitude either. Sorry. Anything you've been through, it ain't shit to what I've been through. Yep. Joe's been up here reading. 
She's studying for history. There ain't nothing for us in them books. Right? That's what I've been saying. We're just slaves in Martin Luther King. Oh, that's a bunch of mess. We wasn't no slaves. I don't know what all them other niggas was doing, but we wasn't no slaves. Your great grandmother was beautiful. She was royalty. She had fine clothes. She spoke languages. When me, when me and your granddaddy lived in Puerto Rico before y'all, we had a mansion. We had money. We was better off than most white folks and all of the native folks. Well, where's that money at now? Girl, hush. What was her name? Who? Our great grandmother. Oh, Josephine. She the one who you named after. I didn't know that. My grandmother. Can we go back to the South with you? I, I want to learn about her. I knew we was more than slaves. We wasn't more than anyone. We just wasn't what them books say, bowing down to no white man. Hmm. Can we go? Ain't no point in that. Do you have pictures of her? Can we see her? Any of her clothes? If she was royalty, there must be books about her or- That's enough, Josephine. We don't need to be digging into the past. Okay. Well, my friend Mary at school, she wanted to talk to Marilyn Monroe. Why? I don't know. She liked her. And she used a Ouija board to talk to her. And she heard her. So we could find Josephine if you wanted to. Look, 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 look. look. I better never hear you say no shit like that ever again. That shit is evil. That ain't nothing but the devil in a box. And if I catch you with that, Lord, help Help you both. If I, if I told you stories, those words got no business coming out of your mouth, Yvette. Yes, ma'am. And I don't want you fucking around with those little loose ass white girls as it is. They ain't got no values. Yes, grandmother. I didn't come up here with to, to hear all this mess with y'all, to go up and with all this mess. You know, just seeing what's up with my girls. Now, are y'all good? Yeah, we good. Especially now that we're the blood of kings. <laughs> You've always been that girl. Always. All right then. She gone? Josephine, just learn what they want you to learn. You can get your education later. She All right, she's gone for real. Why is she so crazy? She's cool. No, she ain't. I mean, she's wrong about the Ouija board. I think that's the one thing she's right about. It's just a damn game. We can't do anything. Have you ever thought about all the things we can't do that all our white friends can? No. It starts at home, you know. Can't be out past the street lights. Can't go on joy rides. Can't use a Ouija board. This is the new oppression. You sound like a fool. Man, I wonder who I'm named after. If you're named after a princess. I ain't named after no princess. That's a damn lie. One of her tall tales. Where you think daddy gets it? He wouldn't lie about that. I've been named Josephine my whole life. And just now hearing about some royal great grandmother? Child, please. And, and she ain't got no facts on her, doesn't want to talk about it. It's a lie. Well, yeah. And where that royal money at? That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm concerned about. So I was named after Josephine Baker. And you was named after nobody, just like it's always been. <laughs> Heifer. Scene five. John and Janet are getting ready for a family dinner. They are dancing and affectionate with one another. They kiss. They are in love. Yvette and Josephine come downstairs and see them. They stop short and watch it in the way children watch their parents be people unto themselves. Yvette breaks the rouse. What are those moves? Oh, come on then, girl, what you got? 
<laughs> Y'all get out of here and set this table now. Everybody <laughs> coming over? Just the aunties. Mm. Um, why y'all got this music so loud? Oh, come on, Rose. You used to like it loud. <laughs> Eddie takes her hand and starts to spin her around. Everyone stops and watches. This is rare. Rose is smiling. Dolores and Jackie enter. Uh, you must have got a little something then, old man. <laughs> get your mouth, boy. Well, let me get in on this. She starts dancing and Jackie soon follows. The song should be something that would be, you know, what people do when they get together. Maybe there's a soul train line. After a while, the music fades and Janet calls everyone to the table. They are all joyous and laughing. Now, where the hell has that been? That's some family shit, yes. And I'm about to lose 10 pounds messing around with y'all. <laughs> Rose sits at the head of the table and leads the family in prayer. They all sit and start to pass food. Yes, give me some of them sweet potatoes. Eddie made those. Oh, no, he didn't. I'm sure he did. <laughs> Well, no wonder, they look good. Why they gotta be so good, cause Eddie made them. Oh, I, I didn't mean nothing like that. I just meant, well, they're good. Mm -hmm. She means it's nice to have a man that can cook, okay? Uh, but okay. she ain't got that. Rose, oh. it's fine. Grandmother uh, told me I was named after her grandmother. I didn't know that. What you talking about? You was named after your grandmother? Uh, she was a princess. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, she got John's imagination. Mm -hmm. You can't be making stories up on a Sunday, girl. I didn't make it up. Grandmother was telling us about- uh, She wasn't nowhere near as dark as Josephine though. Oh. You, you can still see her with the lights out. Oh no, no. Ooh. Everyone thought she was so pretty. I mean, pretty as a picture. Had mm. them nice thin lips too. Oh. Named the wrong girl after her. Didn't know you was light skinned yourself, Rose. <laughs> who was this now? Uh, who was I named after, Mama? What? Yes, was named. Yes, was named after the damn soap opera. <laughs> Are you serious? Your mama was in labor for like thirty hours with your ass. She looked up in the hospital room. General Hospital was on, and she said, "Evet." <laughs> You better be glad she wouldn't watch it. Howdy doody. <laughs> okay, well, I'll just pretend that's not the story. I ain't never heard of this great grandma, Josephine. Well, she ain't on your side of the family. Mm. No, I guess not. So that's why you ain't never heard about her. Mm. Then again, we ain't never heard of anybody from your side of the family. Yeah, uh, Rose, what part of Georgia you say you come from? Uh, who asking? Uh, me. Uh, why? I'm just trying to get to know you, damn. Been knowing me 16 damn years. So Atlanta then, or was it Decatur? I heard South Carolina by mm. way of Philadelphia, right? Yeah. You know what, uh, Barry, and I got an announcement. Hmm. We are moving. What? what? Barry's being shipped off again. Oh. And we're going either back south or maybe back to the island. Y'all go to the island. I'm about to be a stowaway. Say that, girl. Uh -huh. <laughs> and we plan on taking Yvette with us. Oh. Uh, 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 
y'all can't what? handle both girls alone and I'm gonna need some help running the house. So she coming too. Rose, y'all ain't taking my child. We already decided. I ain't going nowhere. Y'all sit your ass down. I'm not going with you. You already went with me once. Your mama and your daddy didn't want your ass. I did. So mm. now what? Yvette runs off. This mm. is a source of insecurity for her. Josephine runs after her. What you going to that for? You all bad. We said we was done talking about that. Rose goes after the girls. I, I'll, I'll fix this. Y'all just y'all just finish them. Um, sweet uh, potatoes. Scene six, Janet is at the sink. She washes dishes. Rose enters behind her smoking. She watches. Um, You're making me think you like the view, Rose. I know you ain't talking to me like that. You forget, I'm grown now. Not to me you ain't. You still that scared, shaking teenage girl at the altar. I'm not shaking. You know what? You think you real cute. What can I do for you, Rose? I'm exhausted. You can talk to me with some respect for starters. I'm liable to slap the hazel right out of your head. Okay. Mm. I heard you tonight when I went after Yvette running your mouth at the table. You can't take her. Oh no? No, you can't. And why not? Because she's not yours. Because she's a teenager now and she's in school. What don't you? Listen, I was the one that raised the child when you couldn't handle it. You stole my child. So, you didn't call me. Uh, you weren't asking me to come back. You weren't asking me to take her back because you couldn't cut it. I was a child myself. Didn't stop you from taking care of Josephine. Now did it. Two was different. Yeah, it is. Just like I told you. And where was your mama and your aunties then? You and Eddie were the best option. Uh, cause they like to drink. That's not why. I ain't heard no other reason. It was a mistake. I wish I had never trusted you to do me right. Do you right? <laughs> we loved that child like she was our own. She was calling me mama. But you wasn't her mama. You had me looking for her for years. Rose disappeared off the planet just to keep her from me. You ain't no natural mother. You ain't fit. I did what I had to do. That's why them girls running all over you now. They do not run over me. Josephine, she thinks she grown. She got attitude. No, she doesn't. But I see where she gets it from. You can look at them and see who raised what child. <clears throat> Yvette got some damn sense. And that's me. I gave her that. And I will be damned to God before I sit back and let you ruin that. You're going to be damned to God for many things, Rose. Ain't got nothing to do with my children. You know what? Uh, you're really looking for a beat down, Jan. You're just gonna be everybody down, ain't you, Rose? One way or another, you're just gonna be everybody down. <laughs> I guess that's why you haven't heard from Terry, you know? How long has it been now? Cause you're such a damn good mother. Janet exits. Rose stamps out her cigarette. Scene seven, John and Eddie are sitting on the porch. Eddie is smoking. This is where they find themselves often. 
Hey there, old man. Hey, John. Man, oh man. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that. These bitches is crazy. Yeah, right? that's why I work so much overtime. <laughs> why mama gotta be so tense, so riled up? Because she knows that's how I like it. I guess so. <laughs> is it, y'all moving again, though? Man, that, that's not confirmed. It's not confirmed, and they're already acting like that. Mm-hmm. These bitches crazy, man. Yep. They both look out onto the street. Maybe they're drinking beers. They are all comfortable in the silence in the present. You know what? Uh, y- y'all ain't taking my baby girl. I never had no intention to. She she almost done with school. Her and Joe getting along. It ain't it ain't how it used to be. You know? No, I know that. Well, then why mama so crazy? Cause she knows I like it like that. <laughs> good Lord, keep that between y'all. All right. Oh, you know that woman got a good heart. Um, yeah. It's like it's about to rain. Yeah, yeah, gonna be a bad storm. Nah, likes to bark all loud, but it never bites. We now, you know, you ain't lying, old man. I ain't never lied, John. Yeah. Hey, what was that? Uh, that big old tornado last summer, then, huh? What was it? Was that all bark? Cause when my ass was standing, it was all bite. <laughs> yeah, I, I forgot about that. You're right. Yeah, I was in it. <laughs> In what? In in that tornado. I never told you about that. Well, you probably did. Yes. Oh, all right. So check it. I was down at the dog race. All right. Don't tell Jan, but down at dog races. But I was down there for like fifty dollars on easy money. Uh-huh. The star dog. Yeah. And uh, everybody knew he was set the window, right? So so I thought that I was walking home with some easy money. <laughs> So uh, I put my bed in, I got to my seat. And I'm just thinking, I'm thinking of everything I'm about to get with this easy money. Yeah, I bet you was. Yeah, and uh, right, like right when they were about to open the gates, they let the dogs loose and they make a damn announcement. They're like, uh, ladies and gentlemen, there's a tornado. Whoa. <laughs> Motherfucker was saying it all nervous and shit. Like he was in the damn thing. And before I knew it, everyone was running around screaming. Brothers holding their hats, them forgot they women and shit. Women, uh, well, like white women specifically, was being trampled, screaming. And I was just standing there like, you know, I, I know they about to let this, this dog race, right? Because I, I already got my easy money, right? But uh, my money best be still good. And then I look up. Uh-oh. Yeah. I look up, and there's that damn tornado. It was right there. Like, like from here all the way to that light pole over there, like right over there. Yeah. And I was like, Jesus, like you, you motherfucker. A nigga can't even gamble. So I started running too, holding on to my ticket, but I was sure I was about to die. So, you know, I see this white man down some stairs and he's running into this door. And you know, you, you're supposed to get in the cellar or something. And I said, hell no, nah, man, I got a family. So I grabbed the door right before it. He got in and closed that motherfucker. And I threw that nigga out. <laughs> no, you didn't. Yes, I did. The hell I did. Dude, Lord knows I've been waiting to do some shit like that, bro. <laughs> and, and, and I hold the door closed and it's just rattling in my hands, right? And I thought the damn roof was about to come off. And, and I said, Lord, I'm sorry for calling you a motherfucker earth. I was pit for all of my sins. <laughs> True story. I said, what a guy. You were shaking. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah, I was shaking. Man, I ain't never seen no twister like this one. Hell, I ain't never seen one, period. Uh, but you made it home. Hell yeah, I made it home. And you ain't been back, have you? Hell no, I ain't been back. I got the message. Look, I got the message. I bet half the niggas ain't been back. We all got the message. <laughs> And white ladies have come back. <laughs> nope. <laughs> they, they was the main ones left behind. <laughs> they lost all their revenue for the year. Uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I don't be looking at storms the same way. That's all. Awesome. Yeah, That's I hear cool. that. You know, yeah. Yeah, we, we had a storm like that back home. Yeah? 
Yeah. Her name was uh, Sabrina. Mm. A woman. All woman. Okay. No, you did. Yeah. Well, Sabrina moved to the town just like that tornado, you know, breaking hearts, women screaming and carrying on, That's men killing mean. each other. Okay. I'm guessing she was pretty. She must be real oh, pretty. Oh, pretty ain't the word. Uh, okay. She was stacked. Sabrina was the devil. Now, you got no cause to do no man like that unless you got a pack with hell and you trying to bring someone down. Shoot. This is before you met mama. Oh, 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 yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> listen, don't you ever bring Sabrina's name up around your mother. She likely to burn the house down. Oh, I know that's right. <laughs> See, Sabrina was a mulatto girl with real long hair, walking around like a leader horn. Ain't no stopping that story. Ain't no reason you want to. Uh, you love that woman. Huh? I mean, her, her. well, yeah, but it, yeah. It, it, it wasn't nothing. It was just some old puppy love. Hurricane Sabrina. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but uh, Tropical Storm Rose. Monsoon Rosie. Whoop your ass up, Rosie. There you go now. <laughs> <laughs> They sit and watch the clouds roll in. Scene eight, Jackie and Dolores are just getting home. Can you believe that happened? John gonna have to get his mama under control. Huh? Uh, good luck with that. Her own husband can't control her ass. Are oh, you wanna play knuckle? Well, might as well. All right. You know, something ain't right in that house. Something just ain't right. I just got a feeling about it, D. So? Uh, well, this is about to be good. Hold on, hold on. So, you noticed Ruby wasn't at church this morning. I wasn't paying attention to Ruby, but I did notice that Tide Basket get around about two or three more times. Mm hmm but you know who else wasn't there? Who? Rose? She ain't never there, but the first one to threaten someone else, if they ain't. So I get a call from Ruby this afternoon, and she mm. was at church, all right. Where? Oh, that's right, she switched over to Mount Mariah because the preacher's wife died, right? Well, no. She went over to John and them's house because Rose was holding a damn sermon in the basement. What now? You heard me. Mm -mm. Rose was down there sermonizing, <laughs> reading the word, and singing. <laughs> what Rose got to say about the word? They ain't staying at Morningstar. That's a big old blaspheme, and the family don't even know. Ruby says she got him out of there real fast. Said Eddie was sitting behind her all quiet. Girl, Ruby lying. Then Ethel and Mary lying too, cause they was there. Good Lord. You know, everybody needs to just find a husband. She got them up there drinking blood, boiling bones, cause they ain't never got anybody to cook for. <laughs> shrunken heads and carrying on and shit. Oh, girl, I'm scaring myself now, Dolores. <laughs> In tableau, a light at the top of John and Janet's house comes on. Rose is in the window. The wind picks up. You see her tonight, bringing up Jordan? When we brought it up, she got real riled. Mm, she got ugly. She mm -hmm. was like, I got an announcement. <laughs> Don't make that face now. <laughs> we all having fun tonight, okay? Sure was. Mm -hmm. They ain't going nowhere. She gonna sit around here and wait for Terry to come around again. She gonna be waiting for a while. He ain't coming around here in years. He got schizophrenia. What? If Rose was my mama, I'd get it too. How you know that? Rose told me. She ain't never told me nothing like that. Cause she know you be running your mouth. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she, 
<laughs> he said it runs in their family. Mm. Terry had a spell one night back a long time ago. Mm. Last time he came up, told Janet a whole bunch of things Rose wouldn't be too happy if she knew. Like what? And you ain't told me? I'm telling you not. You ain't mm. got to know everything, okay? Mm. So I can hear it at the grocery store. Terry told her Eddie wasn't their real daddy. Girl, you lying. Mm -mm. Terry said his real last name was Jackson. His daddy was a Jackson. And if Janet got his birth certificate, she'd see that Eddie wasn't the boy's dad. What? I don't know. I don't know. Oh. I just know that crazy minds be speaking the truth sometimes. And John ain't never brought this up. John don't know a damn thing. Mm. I don't know a damn thing. I'm just telling you what Terry said. You know, I think I remember something being said about that. Mm-hmm, sure you do. So then Eddie just stepped in and raised another man's kid. She must have really put something on him. Mm -hmm. He's just a good man. You don't know nothing about that. Oh, I win. <laughs> Scene nine. Yvette is crying. She throws things into a suitcase or a bag and Josephine enters. What are you doing? S stop it, you're not leaving. You heard them. So? You heard grandmother. Mama and daddy are not about to let you go. Mama stood up for you. And what that mean? They don't have any say in it, not when it comes to her. Oh, uh, okay, so we'll talk to grandpa. What's he gonna do? She runs everything. You're the one who taught me that. Yeah, well you practically grow and she can't just up and move you. Mama and daddy don't want me anyways. That's jive. Of course they do. They don't. She said so. That is more of her lies. More stories, Yvette, just like everything else she say. The mansion in Puerto Rico, the millions of dollars, Josephine, all of it. If mama didn't want you, she wouldn't have been down there yelling for you. And why ain't she up here telling me that herself? You know she don't talk like that. She keeps it in. Then why did she send me away? She was young, you was ugly, I, I don't know. They didn't send you away? I don't know why. But they got you back. What about school? What about dance? I can dance anywhere I got legs. Eve, that is bullshit. She's crazy. You better lower your voice before she hears you. I could whisper and that woman would hear me like she got ears in the walls. Stop hacking. You wanna know what happened with Marlon? Right now? Man, I can't have nothing, can I? It was her. It was all her fault. How? Of course she wants to take you. She loves you. She hates me. She calls me ugly. She, oh, she humiliates me. Miss, calm down. What you saying? You don't hear her when she's talking to me. I mean, I do, but. She went with me to Marlon's birthday party when he turned 15. Yeah. You know, his mom and everybody in class was there. We got there late, even though I was telling her we was running late, she had to get all the way ready. Mm -hmm. And Marlon's mama greets us and takes our coats and I'm talking to everybody and I was thirsty. I had a whole bowl of popcorn waiting on her prissy behind. Okay. So I go into the kitchen where the women are and I ask for a glass of water. Okay. Marlon's mama gives it to me so nice and she says oh i meant to put some out it, it wasn't a bother to her at all but i looked at grandmother and her eyes were cutting holes in my body i was so scared i didn't even drink that damn water what was she mad about i just go back in the room with my friends and that's when she comes after me she comes in the room and yokes me up by my hair no, she didn't. She pulled me up by my pigtail in front of everyone and starts whooping me with her purse. And she's yelling, I'm not to ask anybody for anything in their own home. In front of everybody? Everybody. They just sat there watching me get my 15 year old ass beat. For a glass of water? Marlon's mama tried to pull her off me and she was saying, it's okay, it's okay. And then, and, and then we didn't even leave the party. She went right back in that kitchen and sat down talking and told me to go on with everybody else. 
why did you never tell me this? I'm so damn embarrassed. I haven't looked at Marlon since. He's been trying to send me notes and talk, but I just can't. Uh, Sis. We got in the car. She didn't say nothing about it, about the whooping. But she told me I can't be flirting with no dark boy like Marlon. Our baby's likely to come out purple. <laughs> she ain't said that. Have I ever lied to you? I'd rather just not talk at all than lie about something. Man, I hate her. I hate her. Don't say that out loud. I can't believe she would treat you like that. You know, she's always petting me, loving on me. I never saw it before. You ain't have no reason to. No, I would have given anything to have her love me like that. I, I don't care too much anymore. That thing she said tonight to you about seeing you in the dark? That's every day. She just was louder today. And this cream she gave you? I already know what that is. No need to even look at it. I don't understand. You look just like her. Everyone's always saying y'all are twins. You're her reflection. Yeah, and she hates herself. She doesn't hate, hate herself. She's the most vain woman I've ever known, always in the mirror. No, sis. No, we just know two different people. There's a roar. Rose is lit. She sits at her vanity, rubbing cream into her face again. She doesn't miss a spot. Her neck, her shoulders, her hand. She wraps her hair. She examines every angle. Josephine speaks over this. Remember that story she used to tell us? Which one? A true one or a false one? Ain't no way to ever tell. There was a woman in the town. She was beautiful and she knew it. And the whole town knew it. She was married to a wealthy man and she had servants and she treated them like slaves. She was horrible to everyone, but for some reason she got away with it. And one night there was a storm, a big storm. And she was looking at her van, staring in the mirror like she always did. The screams on her face, brushing her hair 500 times, worshiping herself. And a giant, giant lightning bolt came through the window straight through her, burnt her to a black crisp, still holding the brush. Her body just stayed upright like that till her husband found her. And when he did, her reflection was still in the mirror, but she couldn't take it with her. I remember that story. Yeah. I wonder if she does. Lights down on girls. Thunder and lightning. Eddie enters in the bedroom. The feeling is cold. He sees Rose in the mirror, watching him. Good night, Rose. Good night, Barry. The storm rages throughout the night. The next morning, John surveys the damage, tree limbs and debris. Could be a window. Scene 10. Jackie and Dolores are sitting at Jackie's or Janet's dining room table. Janet walks down in her robe and morning wear. What y'all doing here so early? We came to talk to you. You okay? Yeah, we came to talk to you. You about okay? It. Yeah. Well, we came to talk to you about Rose. Oh, no, I don't want to do none of this right now. I got to get ready for work. No, girl, you better sit your behind down and talk to us. Yeah, sit down. Now, you a grown woman, Jan. <laughs> oh, am I? Mm hmm. And you got to be the woman of your own house. I mean, just stepping underneath Rose's mess got to stop. She crazy. And what y'all want me to do? Throw her out? Ooh, no, girl. She burned this whole place down. It ain't that bad. We got some stuff to work on. 
Mm. Ain't that bad? Mm -hmm. Girl, she trying to take your child from you. Again. Again. And Lord help you if you even look at Eddie. Mm -mm. Can you even look at your own damn husband up in here? Mm -hmm. And the way she talked to Josephine. She gonna mess that girl up. Mm -hmm. She mama. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you his wife. Mm -hmm. And you gonna have to take a stand. Yes. All right. Can I get ready now? I can't be late. This storm already damaged the house. We gonna have to pay for that. Mm -hmm. Come on now, Jam. We about to pray on this. Yes. You got time to pray? All right. All right, now, who's going to do it? You going to do it. All right. All right, now. Now, Lord, we know you hear us today, this morning. Uh, you better get in there. You want to do this? You got some direct connection? Come on, y'all. All right, all right, all right. Pardon the interruption, Father. Father, you have brought our niece here through so many trials and the loss of her mother. Amen. Getting married very young, her no good daddy, and having two babies at an age when most girls was getting their education. Amen. And now our baby is ready to get her life. And we got a roadblock here, Father. We got a traffic jam. That's right. And we don't understand this roadblock, but you do. She is also a child of God and we need you to come and collect. I don't know if that means that her and Eddie gotta move away or they gotta find a house of their own, but we need life, Jan's life to be lifted up and out of the shadows that clouds are in. You know that's right. Say her name now. We are humble servants on this earth, Father. And we ask the Rose. Yes. Rose, Lord, why some people got to be made evil? Jackie. Oh, we just lift this woman up to you and surrender, Father, because you are the one with the answers. You are the one with the plan. That's right. And we're going to trust this plan, Father. It's going to free our niece of these chains. In your name, we pray. Amen. Amen. OK, thank you. I'm about to get ready now. We all she turns and they see Eddie. Down here praying for deliverance from Rose. Eddie, you scared me. I mean, we didn't know you were. Yeah, I heard your little prayer. Well, that's good then. Um, we ain't got nothing against you, Eddie. You cool. Yeah. You always been cool. You play mm -hmm. cards. You don't start no drama. But my wife? We just looking out for Janet. That's all. She needs to step in in our own house. And she's been getting railroaded. Ain't nobody railroaded that girl. Now you know that ain't true. Girl can't even look at you. Damn sure can't talk to you. And why you put up with this, Eddie? Mm -hmm. Auntie, stop it. Mm -mm. But he can't talk to no female. Mm -hmm. You can't talk to no female? Hmm. Now you know that wasn't right. Mm -hmm. What she pulled on these kids, y'all can't just come through here and take Yvette away like she a piece of property. I know that. There ain't nobody trying to take her. Oh, uh, evidently your wife is. Mm -hmm. Now you know that ain't right. I done heard enough from you bitches. <laughs> See, Eddie, that don't even sound like you. Well, it's me, old witch. Huh. And you gonna leave my wife out of all this mess, you hear me? Well, she don't leave herself out of nothing. Lord, when this gets back to Rose. Oh, he ain't gonna say nothing to her. No. Eddie talking a big game now, but he harmless. What am I supposed to do, y'all? I have tried with that woman. I've been knowing her all these years and we still are strangers. What you need to do, we just did. You just got to lift it up. Well, I've been praying on this for 15 years and ain't nothing happened yet. Hmm. Rose is outside humming and hanging clothes on the line. John comes out and up to her. This time gonna be different, child. You'll see. It's just gone too far this time. Scene 11, the yard. Rose is out there tending to laundry. John walks up to her. 
Mama, yeah, you know we got a dryer, right? No, it ain't the same. Um, this is how we always done it. Don't need a damn machine for everything. What you doing home? Uh, I just came home for lunch. Oh, oh, you want me to go fix you something? Uh, no, I'm all right. I, I got a sandwich. Oh, your wife didn't leave you nothing? Uh, she, she didn't know I was coming back. Mm -hmm. uh, Mama, uh, we got to we got to talk. Uh, what we what we got to talk about, baby? Um uh, uh you uh what what you got to say? <sighs> All right, so well everybody was having a good time last night. You know, getting along, dancing and uh and then you got to come out the gate with all this moving talk. I, I ain't come out no gate. I ain't one of your little race dogs. Can I just... Now, you sat up here and looked at me and my wife and, and told us you're going to take our child away. And you did it in front of her. We had to talk about it. We, we didn't have to talk about it then. All right, you you know that. And I, I talked to the old man. He said he didn't even know if y'all were leaving yet. You checking up on me? No, no. Y'all comparing stories, son? I, it, it wasn't even like that, mama. We was just talking, but it got me thinking. Uh, you and Pop been. No, no, you and Pop been married. All right, all these years. Well, since I was born anyway, and I'm 34 years old. You got me so twisted and confused, I can't even think straight. I know how long I've been looking at your ass. Well, Jane and I have been married for like half of that. And I need you to do right by her, okay? What do you mean? I just, I need you, <clears throat> I, I need you to respect my wife. She don't respect me. Yes. Yes, she does. She, I've seen her. I, I need you to do the same or... Or, or what? To, uh, or I need you and Pop to go get your own place. <laughs> Ooh, uh, no, no, you, no, you ain't. No, no, you ain't. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Mm -mm. I know you're not trying to kick your mama out onto the streets now. No. Because I know you know that I made your ass and I will kill your ass. Is that right? Mama, I just, I, I need you to have peace with Jan. Mm. And and I I need you to not <clears throat> I need you to not be calling my baby girl Darky at talking about her lips and her hair. None of that. Uh, there was more. You can't be you can't be up here treating her sister like your damn pet and then you turn around and call my child them old slave words. I know what that is. <laughs> you you really raising hell right now, ain't you, John? Hey, this is my family. <laughs> oh, and I ain't part of your family. John and Rose stare each other down. Rose steps in and puts her hand on John's cheek. She pats it. Her eyes soften. You heard from your brother lately? Uh, no, I, I haven't. <clears throat> you okay, mama? Oh yeah, I'm feeling all right, son. We gotta find Terry. When we go, when, 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 when he's gone for a long time like this, you know, I get so worried about him. I know it. 
Last time I seen him, he said he was going to be on his medications and seeing his doctor. I know. And all this time gone makes me think he ain't seeing his doctor and he ain't taking his pills. Probably not. Where do you think he is? I don't know. He got the only thing I pray for these days. I got to talk to God about it. Lord knows I can't take your daddy. I can't talk to your daddy about this. Yeah. He gets in a bad way about it. Terry was always his favorite. What's up with y'all? And all this favorite talk. Why there always got to be a favorite? It's just different. So I ain't your favorite son. You just tried to kick me out of your house and you raised your voice at me. Hell no, you ain't my favorite. I'm going to get some food, man. All right, son. Yes, mama. Uh, son. I ain't going nowhere. And you can tell that. To your wife. <laughs> Scene two, 12. Yvette walks into her bedroom. Josephine is already there. Yvette is being sneaky. It takes a few seconds for Josephine to notice. Girl, what are you doing? Scared me. What the hell are you doing? I got something. Beer? Girl, no. You wouldn't know what to do with it if I did. What the hell is that, Eve? I got it from Mary. I don't care where you got it from. You heard what grandmother said about those things. And you told me it was more folk tales. Not when it comes to a Ouija board. Oh, come on. Serious. I thought you would appreciate this. Having a gateway to hell in my bedroom? No, thank you. No, to try to get a hold of Josephine. The old Josephine. You mean call her from, from beyond? Don't you want to know? You're not finding out anything any other way. No, I, I told you. She's made up. She's not real. Okay, well then what is there to worry about? Yvette sits on the ground and opens the Ouija board box. <sighs> You've been hanging around them white girls too damn much. You know we don't mess around with this. Says the girl with a white boyfriend. Yeah, well, at least he's got some sense. You don't have to do it, Joe. I can figure this out on my own. Josephine closes the door and shuts the blinds. She sits across from her sister. Okay. We are focused on Josephine. We want to know if she was real. If she was beautiful. And where that money at. <laughs> I am so scared. You can't be scared. You're the one who has to ask the questions. I don't know what to ask her. Now, we put our hands on this thing, just your fingers, and it's supposed to move. Josephine puts her hands on it and then quickly removes them. I'm, I'm good. I, I don't really need to know about her dead ass. Yo. Do I really care about this? Does it really matter if grandmother made her up? No, there's a whole bunch of fictional characters that shape my life. I'm cool if she's one of them. Whoa, sit down. I want to know the truth. I want to know if we are the blood of royalty. If you believe that Christ is king, then yes. Oh my God. Uh, fine. Yvette puts her hands on the gang. She closes her eyes. Am I alone in this sisterhood? Josephine rolls her eyes. She sits. She places her hands. Go ahead. Okay. Um, Just start somewhere. We are looking for our namesake, Josephine. We were told she was royal and rich and beautiful. Uh, Y'all got anyone like that? Man, you didn't do it right. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, okay, keep going. Okay. Uh, Ask about the money. And I don't want to sound greedy. Ask nicely. 
was Josephine, my great grandmother. Yes. Yes, she was. She was. Did you do that? No, nigga, keep going. I ain't no nigga. Is Josephine here? A L W A Y S. Oh my God, she's like your guardian angel, Joe. Yeah, goosebumps. Okay. Are you Josephine? Yes. Okay. Hey, <laughs> mother. <laughs> Are you? Were Were you royalty? Oh, she was big royalty. Okay. okay. <laughs> were you beautiful? Ooh, she said, "Don't play now." <laughs> Are you good? Why you gonna ask a thing like that? Ask about the damn dough. R. O S E. What the hell does that mean? Rose is our grandmother. Wait. You want to talk to Rose? Is is she asking for grandmother? No. So what do you want her to do? The pendant moves like crazy. It spells out a word. The girls react and start screaming. Oh they my stand. God. Yvette kicks the board across the room. They huddle together. Eve, you better get that thing out of this house. I don't wanna touch it. You're gonna have to because it's got to go. The door opens, the girls jump. Rose enters. What's, what's all this whooping about and hollering? What are y'all doing in here? You watching them damn evil movies I told you all about? Rose goes to the TV to turn it off and sees the game. Her eyes grow wide. What the hell is this here? What, what the fuck is this here? Grandmother? You, you bring this shit in my house after I already that told you about this evil! I no, you didn't. No, you didn't. Is that all this? Oh, get all this shit. Oh, no. This shit is after me. No, no. You, you, oh, you're going to have to step in and deliver. He turns oh. the side back across the face. Ah. What you trying to do, girl? You, you trying to, you trying to burn this house down. This, uh, this got to go. It, this has got to get out of here. Rose goes to the me. game and picks it up. She holds it in her hands and continues to pray, growling louder. Maybe the light flickers. A, a fire starts in her hands. The girls hold each other. Rose drops the game and clutches her chest. She gasps for air. They should. Yvette cries. Josephine springs to the door. Grandpa, Grandpa, Mama, it's Grandmother. Rose is collapsing. Eddie runs in to her and holds her on the floor. John and Janet follow. Girls, call the ambulance right now. Rosie, Rose, Rose. John is distraught, standing. No one notices the game. End act one. Act two, scene one. Janet is at the table on the phone. Papers spread out before her. Eddie sits in a chair nearby, away from her. He is catatonic. Monday morning. Sounds good. Yes, I have an appointment for this afternoon. It'll just be myself. Yes, I'll be picking one out. I ordered the gladiolas. No, 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 she hates roses. Okay, thank you. Hey, I got this. He nods. 
stands and walks out. Janet looks at everything before her and wants to collapse. Jackie and Dolores enter with food. Hey, baby. How you doing? I'm all right. Just planning this funeral. Why are you doing it? Who else? Eddie, her sons. Auntie Eddie is out of it. He ain't spoken one word since that night. I ain't heard the damn word from Terry. I don't even know if he knows. John hasn't been able to track him down. It's a shame. It is, it's such a shame. Oh, this is such a good woman. And John's down- Where's John at? He's down at the courthouse, trying to get any papers we can for, for on her for the obituary to track her people down in Georgia. Hmm. Well, what can we do to help? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nothing. I gotta go today and pick out a coffin. Mm -hmm. I ain't never done anything like this before. It's the worst part. Yeah, we had to do it all too many times. That's when you know the family is yours. Mm -hmm. When you got to make those tough decisions, when I go, just put me in a pine box and don't shed a tear. Hallelujah, I hear that. Let me go out the way I came in. Okay, this is not helping. Sorry, baby. We just feel in the spirit is all. So look, I made y'all some casserole, some peach cobbler too. That should help. Thank you. Mm -hmm. No one in this house feels like cooking or eating. Well, this should get you through a couple of nights at least. I'm sure it will. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm just gonna get a little sliver of this cobbler before I go. <laughs> what, Jackie. Well, you shouldn't made it. You shouldn't have made two. Hell, I'm grieving too. This all happened so fast. How's John? He broke down last night, blaming himself. Nah, ain't no place for that. The Lord decides when the time is right. Ain't no man can do that. Oh, yes, Jan. He does. Ain't no cause feeling guilty. Because we prayed for peace, and then the woman up and died. I mean, we ain't got nothing on the Lord's timing. What? Ah, we prayed for him to lift a roadblock. Didn't know how high he was going to lift it up, though. Mm. Jan, don't pay her no mind. We, we did, though. Mm -hmm. We did pray hard for peace. We did. Nah, Jackie, mm -hmm. you the one that led the prayer. She mm -hmm. the one who went all in. All right, well, don't put that evil on me, Dolores. Now, I was thinking she'd find an apartment or something. Not have no, you know. Shh. Have no massive heart attack. All you said was give us peace. And here we are. And here we are. Scene two. Eddie is sitting outside. There's a fire in the trash can. Josephine runs up and stops at the sight of it. Smells like tobacco. It is. All your cigarettes? Yeah. She puts her things down, finds a stick in the yard and sits down next to him. She pokes it at the fire. It's a comfortable silence as it crackles on. This week is some bullshit, huh? <laughs> yeah, that it is. It's been so quiet around here. I don't know if it's because grandmother was so loud or because we ain't got nothing to say. Well, I reckon it was a little bit of both. Yeah. I'm sure she's looking down right now mad because my hair ain't done. Hmm. And I got stains on my shirt. Yep. <laughs> What's it like? What's it like to be with someone for so long and then be without them? 
Yeah, I don't know. I don't know yet. I'll, I'll, I'll let you know when I do. Yeah, it was so recent. Mom is doing a good job planning her funeral. It's going to be beautiful. Your mama is a good woman. You really think that? I really do. I didn't know you liked her. You hardly ever talked to her. Well, that don't mean I don't like her. Yeah, you hardly talk to anyone, huh? <laughs> oh, I, I bet that's your first laugh, and I got it. Well, it just might be. Why are you burning your cigarettes? I just don't want them anymore. Ain't gonna do nothing to kill me. You think grandmother died because she smoked? I do not. I just don't want to, if that's all right with you. Yeah, I want you around for a long time. All right then. Grandpa? Yeah, girl. Do you know anything about my great-grandmother, Josephine? Now, why do you keep asking about her? Maybe grandmother has some other family I could talk to? No, no, no. Rose's family, uh... You should just leave all that alone. So they're not royalty. Where the hell did you get that? Well, grandmother said that. <laughs> Rosie, oh, Lord have mercy. She said we wasn't slaves, we were royalty, on her side anyway, and I was named after Joseph. Now listen, girl, your grandmother's side of the family, look, they funny, and they'll go poking around looking for people that don't want to be found. But why don't they want to be found? I don't understand, they family. They ain't family to us. I... Look, family is more than blood. You remember that. Now, what your grandmother didn't want to talk about when she was alive, we ain't got to talk about now that she's gone. Simple as that. You hear me? Listen, I don't ever want you looking back. You, your sister, your daddy, your mama, you always got to be facing the future, looking ahead. See, there ain't nothing here for you. Okay, Grandpa. You understand? I understand. Josephine stands. She stops right at him and outs her hand on his shoulder. I love you, Grandpa. Oh. I love you, baby girl. Josephine goes into the house and upstairs to her room. Scene three, Yvette is there trying on clothes, black clothes, and she's in the mirror. That's too short. Grandmother will rise out of her coffin and slap you. Wish she would. What's wrong with you? Nothing. I'm just trying to figure out what I would look cute crying in. You going for, to hell for that. I'm going for lots of shit. Okay. You doing okay? I'm fine. Shit, I'm groovy. I am new being queen on top of the world. I'm Beverly Johnson. Okay. How are you? Uh, not groovy, not new being queen, and sure as hell not Beverly Johnson. Yeah. You more Grace Jones. Shut up. <laughs> Honestly, Joe, you should be the first one dancing. And why is that? Because you free, Joe. You follow the drinking gourd free, Joe. <laughs> you need some Jesus right now. Does this whole house not feel lighter? The dark cloud has lifted, and you never have to hear the words darky, nappy, big lip, none of that shit ever again. You know that makes you want to dance. You celebrating for me. For us. When you told me the things she'd done to you, it was like she was talking about a stranger. 
not my grandmother. And, and it stirred something up inside me, Joe. It made me mad. Why are you mad? She loved you, loved you, you all she ever talked about. No, you ain't celebrating for me. You don't even know. You didn't bring that game in this house for me. Yes, I did. You the one who wanted to see this black princess you were supposedly named after. You found that in a book if it was real. Yeah, but you didn't. You couldn't find shit. I don't get you, Joe. You cried to me about everything she did to you. I'm fine, okay? I can handle it. She's still my grandmother, Eve. She my blood. I, you can't be in here prancing and dancing. She ain't even in the ground yet. For real? I'm trying to understand where you're coming from and you doing me like this? You're trying to understand where I'm coming from? You can't. You will never know. What? Because you dark and the world hates you and you have it so bad, Joe. So I can't never understand? I can't even try. That's right. That's right. I'm still black. I can still get it. You want to get it. No, you, you don't. You need to get out of this room before I lose my temper for real now. It's my room too. And I ain't moving, so you can take your Rosa Parks ass to the back of the bus. She grabs the cream. She starts spreading it all over Yvette's face. You want to know what it's like? Why don't you put some bleach in your bath? Why don't you rub this cream in every night and don't miss a spot now? Don't miss a spot now, darky, tar baby. Yvette is screaming and fighting to get Josephine off of her. Josephine is in a rage, more fighting. Janet runs in. Hey, hey, girls. Hey, what the hell are you two doing? Y'all gonna start fighting now? What are you covered in? And you're gonna start caring about what the hell we're doing now? What the hell you say? Oh, oh, now you wanna step up and be the mama because now grandmother is gone? I am your mama and you best not forget that. I will slap that attitude right out your mouth. You wouldn't even touch me. Child, what the hell has gotten into you? Why didn't you want me? What? Why you sent me away when I was a baby? You didn't want me. You sent me to live with her. Why? What you talking about? Of course I wanted you. You sent me off. You didn't send Joe off. Oh, baby, it's not because we didn't want you. We loved you. We loved you so much. Grandmother said she had to pay y'all to take me back. That's just not true. Now, baby, I wanted you right here with us. With your sister and me and your daddy. We were so young, Eve. We was younger than you are now. It was just different times. She said you never even came to see me. Baby, I couldn't find you. She ran off with you for damn near two years. She did what? I asked your grandparents to take you for a little while. Me and your daddy, we just, we couldn't handle you both. I just wanted a break, a few weeks. Why not Joe? Joe was older. She would have known just what was happening. You were tiny, brand new. You would never remember you missed us. She just stole her? We would see you every weekend. Go down to Missouri where you was. And one day we went down there and you was gone. And the house was boarded up and I tried. I tried for two years to track you down. But I had no idea where to start. Me and your daddy went to Georgia to find you. Ain't no one down there seen or heard from your grandmother in years. So we came back here and just waited. You lying. I never felt a pain like that. I never will. And then she just brought me back? Your uncle Terry came to live with us for a spell. She heard that somehow and came to see him, acted like nothing ever happened. You were walking and talking and calling her mama. Tell me you whooped her ass. We just never talked about it. Terry was home, Yvette was home. We just went on being a family. But yes, I wanted to whoop her thick ass, but I didn't. Who? Is this woman, Mama? Cause she told me, she told me. No, I've always wanted you, baby. I have always been your mother. God, I hate her. I hate her. 
Now, Josephine, we still got your grandfather. Don't you let him hear nothing like that. He ain't no better. If she was lying, he was lying. Child, there's still a bunch of mess you don't know. A bunch I don't even know. But you know your grandpa is a good man. What don't you know? Why all this mystery? Just things we don't talk about. Yeah, a family full of secrets. Bet these don't happen in white families. Now what's that got to do with anything? Mike's dad just left his mom and he let everybody know why. Uh, who the hell is Mike? My white boyfriend. There, I said it, my white boyfriend. Uh, who told you you can date? I don't care what color he is. I'm not living any more secrets. I can't stand this shit, Mama. Lies and dead ends. I don't even know who I was named after. What you mean? Yes, you do. My mother. Josephine was her middle name. What? <laughs> what? Who else you think? You know I ain't named you after no stripper like Josephine Baker. All right, that's it. Just more of her tall tales. Mama, I got something to tell you. Joe, don't. We could go to jail. What the hell y'all do? We killed her. Grandmother. We brought a Ouija board in the house. Now I know you're lying. Not lying and I'm sorry? I gotta go call the preacher. Mama, wait. You two can't be fucking around with this evil mess. We were just trying to get answers. We wanted to talk to Josephine. Baker? No, grandmother's grandma. She said it's who I was named after. I never heard of this woman. She said she was royalty, that she had a lot of money. Huh. And where that at? So we tried to talk to her. <sighs> Through that evil ass game. That is specifically made for white folks. You know we is too close to the Lord for that shit. She spoke to us, mama. Josephine? She said, um, well, she said, she said she wanted Rose with her. And then we screamed and threw the board across the room and that's when grandmother came in and saw it and then she picked it up and... And? Her hands caught on fire. And then she died. Y'all got to tell me this is a joke. This is an early Halloween joke. Oh, Lord have mercy. Y'all did not go there in my house. We're sorry, Mama. We didn't even think it was gonna work. And, and it caught her hands on fire? The craziest part about all this shit is, I believe you. I believe the hell out of that. That woman, oh, that woman, I swear, if she weren't dead, there are just so many things about your father's side of the family. That's why I don't want y'all messing around with your dark-sided stuff. You're prone to it. The stories, the things I saw when I was down there looking for you, Eve, I've, I blocked it all out. And I need you two to block this out. This never happened. Mama, no, I just said no more secrets. I know you think that's what you want now, Joe, but trust me, you don't learn when to keep something close to your chest. You will find yourself alone. I already feel alone. You're not. That woman took something from everyone now, not just you. Then why we never talk about it? Everything is not supposed to be everybody's business, even what happens in a family. Mama, the thing she said and did to Joe? I, I know it, baby. I know it. I am so sorry. I didn't save you from all that shit she done put you through. But you got to know, you got to know, you are so beautiful. You are my first child and there was never anything more beautiful to me than that. You are so strong, Joe. You just, you just gotta press on now. 
We all just gotta look to the future and press on now. Scene four, Eddie is in his bedroom. Rose is there. He puts on a song. She watches him and tries to keep it together, even alone. are a good man, Barry, a good man. Rosie, I miss you. And I ain't ready, Rosie, I ain't ready. Ain't no one know me but you. They all trying to run around and figure it out. But you know me. You know me. I'm still not ready. Nobody is, Barry. Scene five. John comes bursting through the front door. Jan, Jan, hey, what is woman there? Hey, baby. I got the papers. You've been done. All, you've been gone all day. Let me get you some water. Jan, you will not believe what the hell I just went through. You, you know, I almost went to jail today. Just to get your public records? Y yeah. Ah, uh, I had a sock nigga in the face. I'm out there. I'm out here trying to be, be saved, and I really had to hit him, motherfucker. Well, why don't you calm down and tell me what happened? I am. I, I'm calm, all right? Damn it. I'm sitting, ain't I? Okay, John. Okay, all, all right. So I'm down there at the courthouse, waiting in line, and who do I see but uh, Terry's old buddy, Conrad. The con man? Yes. That old slick oil-looking motherfucker. Talking about he ain't heard from Terry, but Terry owing money. I said, uh, uh... You, the motherfucker that owes everybody in this goddamn town money. I ain't really here to uh, uh, hear nothing about Terry. That man is a damn mess. So I tell, I hear, I tell, uh, I tell him my mama just passed, and he tells me I better be praying on her soul because everybody in town knows that she's the devil. John, no, he didn't. Jan, I, I didn't have no choice but to haul off and hit that motherfucker. That's right. I hit that nigga so hard my jaw shook. All right, that nigga fell out. Arms up, all that shit. So anyway, security then comes over. They, they're running over because I'm, I'm about to kick this dude in the guts. And security grabs me, holds me back. Like, man, get off of me. I, and I look, anyway, I turn around and look, it was Ricky. From the club? Yeah, from the club. And he backs up. He's like, John? I said, yeah, nigga, it's me. And he's like, He's like, what you doing throwing bows in the courthouse? I said, that's the con man right there. He said, Conrad? Conrad's like, yeah, nigga, uh. And Ricky goes, motherfucker, you know you owe me $40 from the last time we was up here, right? And Conrad starts in one of his stories and shit. Because he got a million of them. Oh, who you tell? And anyway, Ricky calls Conrad's probation officer, tell him to come get his ass. He didn't get the one swinging at you? Woman, hell no. So then I'm standing there talking to Ricky, and he told me he seen Terry uh, downtown just last week. He's in town? Said he was in his right mind, though. No. Yeah, said he was down there raising hell, scaring everybody. So he ain't been to the doctor? Hell no. I'm so sorry, baby. Yeah, so anyway, I went driving around looking for him. Asking people about him. Nothing? No. But look, <laughs> I got all these papers, what, what I could get anyway, and they still have to send away from me. Oh, uh, well, they got to send me some anyway. I, I got mama uh, and daddy's marriage certificate. I got a birth certificate right here. <sighs> I knew that woman wasn't no 49 years old. Hell no, she wasn't 49. She always tells some big story. Mom. Oh, baby, she loved you. 
Jane, I gotta tell you something. I keep my mom out the house. What? The day she passed, I was. I went out there and she was with clothes and I told her, I told her straight up, Janet is my wife. You will respect her, you can leave. You told her that? I saw what it was doing to you and the girls. I got angry as hell. I raised my goddamn voice to her. I have never raised my voice for that woman. I know you haven't. Look what I did. I killed her. Sean. No, I killed her. I killed her. I know how I can get it. Like, I, I just never thought that I could do this. Sean, you didn't kill your mother by standing up for your family. She was strong on the outside, but I knew she was soft on the inside. You know that too. John, baby, you didn't kill your mother. I didn't kill your mother. Nobody had any hand in her death but the Lord. And if we believe in him and his greatness, then we believe she's in a better place there than she was here. Is that not right? It's just, there's so many things I never got to say to her. Baby, we all left things unsaid to your mother. You think she, uh, <clears throat> you think she made it up there? I think your mother is right where she deserves to be. Why don't you go lay down, baby? I'll wake you up for dinner. Okay. They kiss with passion. John turns to go to their bedroom. Janet goes through the documents. She calls after him. Hey, you get your birth certificate? Uh, yeah, it's supposed to be in there. Oh, it's right here. You were a tiny little guy. I wish either one of my kids was six pounds. Rosemary. She shakes her head. She reads on. She reads something she doesn't believe. She reads it again. She throws all the papers back into the envelope. She's fast and furious. She exits. Scene five. There's a funeral song. And Mahalia Jackson, the family enters wearing their funeral dress and enters the house as the song plays on. Eddie stays on the porch. He looks on. John goes inside and sits alone. Josephine and Yvette go into their bedroom. Janet, Jackie, and Dolores set the table for dinner. Pull out the casseroles, the cobbler. They move expertly in the kitchen in a well-mannered dance of silence and efficiency. Everyone in the house moves to the table and stands at their seats, then join for prayer. Take my hand, lead me on. Scene six. Janet stands at the head of the table, the place Rose was before. She leads the family in this prayer. We may or may not hear it. Afterwards, she sits. Everyone sits. The food is passed. No one knows quite how to start talking. Hey, old man. <clears throat> hey, John. Uh... I ran into old Conrad yesterday, Terry's friend. You seen that old good for nothing brother of yours? Uh, nah. I thought he'd at least show up for your mama. Seen Ricky too. Old Drew's boy? Um, yeah, he said last he heard uh, Terry was in Texas. What the hell's he doing down there? Working on them oil rigs, making money. Yeah, about damn time. 
Yeah, I told him, you know, you hear from my brother again, you tell him to call home. He said he would, so. Hmm. Ooh, that service was beautiful today. It was a great tribute to your wife, Eddie. For the flowers, the songs, and didn't she look good? Yeah, just like she was sleeping. Just as peaceful as can be. Her skin was just as bright as ever. Like she could get up and walk right out of there. Mm -hmm. But of course, she's wrapped in his love and embrace. And that's the only place she would want to be. Somebody told Joe she looks like grandmother. She do? They said she was her spitting image. When I met your grandmother, she looked just like your sister does now. Mm -hmm. I'm just a little bit older. Same pretty dark skin, same wild hair, just like that. I'd like to see a picture. I'm sure I got one around somewhere. Grandpa, what was your favorite memory with grandmother? Eve, you can't be asking stuff like that. No, 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 it's all right, it's all right. You know, I don't know, Yvette. I loved her when she was sleeping. <laughs> no, no, listen. <laughs> I loved her when she didn't know I was watching her and uh, she had her vain ass in that mirror. Mm. I'm trying to sneak and buy a new dress. Like I didn't know I was missing money. <laughs> or, or when your daddy was little. She'd walk with him hand in hand. I can't ever forget that picture in my mind. <laughs> Your loud ass daddy, just a tiny old thing. <laughs> daddy as a baby? <laughs> no, wasn't he born an old man? No, no, no. He started out just like everybody else. And your grandmother loved him. I mean, ooh, something fierce. Hmm. Okay, she would do anything for you, boy, and your big-headed brother. As much as she loved her children, she really loved her grands, you too. Now, she would have cut a man in the streets for either of y'all. Even me? Oh, yes, child, yes. Now you was her first grandbaby. There's no replacing that, especially you. No, 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 no. Now, none of that. Come on now, we done cried our tears. Not me. I ain't cried once yet, not for her. It's all right, girl. Now, I know she had a funny way of showing you. It's all right. She didn't hate me? No, child. Who could ever hate you? You reminded her so much of herself. No, child. Sit down now, Joe. It's all right. Look, I just want to remember my wife, Rosie, as someone who loved her family, who was close to God, and who passed away mm. in the arms of love. You hear me now? Yeah. Lord. She was a good woman. Lord, yes. Jesus gained a warrior with Rose. Amen. Amen. In the Upper Room by Mahalia Jackson Swells. It plays for a while. Mm -hmm. Scene seven, Yvette and Josephine have just come up from dinner. They quietly unready themselves from the day. What do you think? I think you better practice some dance moves you've been putting off for some Allison come and take your spot. <laughs> that seems like a damn year ago. 
You just stay in them books, don't you? I'm not missing graduation over a damn history class. Besides, this is studying on my own time. History of first generation blacks in America. Rural education. All right. You still looking for Josephine? Trying to find her? No girl, I ain't looking. Do you think we saw what we think we saw? They connect. Josephine puts her head back in her book. Yvette turns up her music. Scene eight, Janet, Jackie, and Dolores are at the end of cleaning up the dining room and kitchen. John sits outside on the porch, out of their earshot. That's it. Those pans can soak until tomorrow. <laughs> you really stepped up, Jan. We seen you. That's what you gotta do for family. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, your mama is up there proud, right? <laughs> oh, yes. She's saying, that's my baby. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And if she sees Rose's ass up there, Lord, it's gonna be a storm tonight. <laughs> Girl, thunder and lightning. They got to keep windows. them two apart. That's right, board up all them windows. Are you all leaving? Yes, yes, we out. Mm -hmm. You take care of yourself now, Eddie. Mm -hmm. Be good now, you hear? All right, bye-bye. Dolores, she about to break that man's spine with all that. <laughs> okay, well, y'all got to go now. We going, we going. We family, Eddie. We may not be blood, but we family. Well, good night. Yeah, those two ain't got a lick of sense between them. Don't tell them that, they'll prove it. <laughs> <laughs> Jan, I, I really wanna thank you for putting all this together. I just couldn't do it. Oh, of course, Pop. Oh, before I forget, uh, John had gone to get all of Rose's documents, the ones he could get. Your marriage certificate is in there. You, you look at all these. Mm -hmm. What's all in here? Just certificates, social security, John and Terry's uh, birth certificates. Ah, you saw them too, huh? John see him. I don't think he ever has. Listen, I know he never has because Rose made sure of that. Yeah, who is that person? Some deadbeat who didn't want nothing to do with Rose or his own children. Some bastard I never met. So, So what you trying to do with this? Nothing, Eddie, nothing. I didn't even want to know the truth. I just saw it. It makes no difference to me. You still his father. You still the girl's grandfather. Y'all, uh, y'all all I have left. But you have us. Ain't nothing ever, ever gonna change that, Pop. Especially not no old ass piece of paper. That don't mean nothing. Look, I, I, I have made this family. Hey, John will never hear this from me. It's none of my business. He ain't ever gotta know. Lights up on the porch where John is sitting. Scene nine, Eddie walks out. John doesn't even look over. He knows who it is. Hey, Pop. Hey, son. What you doing out here? Uh, thank you. About when we was kids and me and Terry and, and you and mama living on the island. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was a long time ago. Yes and no. 
it don't really feel like that long ago. Well, it was. The house was big, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Do we have money? I had money. I remember that. Big old staircase. That's right. Man, it's crazy. The things you remember when you just kind of look back, you know? I was little too. <laughs> yeah, you was. Yeah. Did I tell you, uh, Terry and I used to go walking in those damn jungles and wrestle up some rattlesnakes? <laughs> Yeah, I remember some tall tale you was telling about them snakes. Yeah. Hey, Pop, it, it wasn't no tall tale, though. It was all right. So Terry would find them and, and I wrestle them up. <laughs> Ooh, and when Terry gets back from Texas, I'm going to have him tell you. <laughs> you always seem to believe what that nigga say, I guess. No, listen, I don't believe either one of you. <laughs> hey, hey, look, no, I'm going to tell you now. Okay, this snake was about the size, it was about to wrap around the whole house, first off, all the way around, like juju. And it was about like this, like this thick, you know what <laughs> I mean? And 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 it was as thick as a full grown man, uh, thick some steak sauce. And and Terry sees it with the, with those, those binoculars. And and I, you know, I got him, I got him those. You didn't, you know, anyway, he goes, hey, hey. And I see this big motherfucker. <laughs> and what you think I did? <laughs> what do you think you did? I jumped that motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. As John's story continues, the lights fade down. Then the room on. lights in the house are on. There is light inside. End of play. So thank y'all so much for joining us this evening. I like to have the cast back just to say hey and uh, for us to all together say thank you so much for joining us. We hope that y'all have an amazing even evening. We hope y'all had an amazing time and uh, was really involved and enthralled into what the story is, all right? All right, thank y'all so much. Have a Thanks lovely evening. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank Good night. you. Stay safe. Bye.